What's up, everyone? Kevin here, a.k.a. the Fantasy Football Geek, with the DFS Army. And I'm here to talk about our newest feature to the Domination Station Optimizer, DraftKings Pick'em or Tiers support. Now, I'm really excited to get this launched. Reality is I really want to... As much as we want to cover every single wacky game that DraftKings or FanDuel comes up with. So don't think that's not something we always work on. But DraftKings and FanDuel don't oblige. They change them frequently enough that you kind of have to wait and see which formats are permanent before we really want to build them up for our Domination Station Optimizer, the tool that allows you as a DFS Army VIP member to compete like a pro with the pros Leads to big wins. Going to our wall wins. Wasn't planning on it, but that's how you win the $100,000 top prize. That's how you win the $12,000 top prize in MMA. That's how you win $20,000 playing MLB. That's how you win $10,000 playing MLB. That's how you win $10,000. But yeah, we just do them by recent, so a lot of these are MLB. But um, big winners. Fight on twice. Here we go. $10,000 and NASCAR. 75,000 NASCAR. This don't happen by accident. 25,000 NBA. 100,000 PGA. This is all in the last few months. 20,000. 20,000 NBA. NBA. We crushed NBA. 100,000. I mean, this is ridiculous. So this is how you get the big wins. You use the Domination Station Optimizer. You use custom projections. The best tools and advice anywhere dfsarmy.com use promo code geek to sign up anyway back to what i was saying draftkings pick them support here we go tears not pick them tears i'm gonna have to remember that to just change the name this week all right so here's the the, the tears page still shows you all the different various games we have it set up now with a fil filtering system so you can understand who's in what tier. The, the simplest way, and let me, let me clear my settings. Refresh projections just in case anything's changed. All right, so here we go. Set up your tiers page, and, and here you have the tiers broken down with a little, each one has a color and a number, tier one, tier two, tier three. Set up like this so you can quickly glance over and try to get a quick sense of who's going to be the chalk, you know. So we can see in tier one, Ramirez is clearly projected above all other players. Interesting that our projections provider, this is our custom projection, our provider, our data provider projections actually like Mike Trout a little bit more so. But we, our projections in this case, love Ramirez a lot more. So we'll see how that works out. You get to use either one. You can use whichever one you want. We think ours are better. Um, all right, so Tier 2, clear favorite here with Brantley. Tier 3, clearly Sterling Mart. Tier 4, Nolan Ariendo. Ar Arnado, Arenado. I don't play MLB very much. And so on and so forth. It, if we simply do the basic... Now, DraftKings does require us to make two customizations in order to create a lineup. So I'm going to look for two players I definitely don't want to use. We're going to give them dislikes. You know, I'm going to look for low projected players. Um, it could work the opposite. You can throw likes on players that you definitely do want to use. But I, for the purpose of the demonstration, I want to quickly point out how you generate initially the optimal line up based on projections and here you have it initially it's going to just take the highest projected player in each tier ramirez brantley rosario vado desir and merrifield so we've got this lineup that becomes now these other ones are also so close there's not really a significant difference between 60.49 or 60.41 for example 60.157. These are all about the same projection wise. So any of these would be something I would consider a chalk or K 
cash lineup. You can use these in head-to-heads. You can use these in cash games. I use them in a tournament too. Why not? But I mean, it's not designed to be a tournament lineup. It's designed to be head-to-head. -head. It's designed to win cash games. It's the highest projected. Now we want to do some tournaments. So how do we change this? Well, the first thing and one of the cool things we do is we've set this up as a filter. So you can filter down by tier. And the strategy with tiers for me is to lock in a couple of the tiers where you feel super confident and then let the power of optimization and scrambling like mix and match up the rest of them. So let me just assume that I love Ramirez just like the projections do in, in tier one. I'm going to lock him in. That's going to remove these three question marks from my pool completely. Now I better be right or else I'm not winning this tournament. I want to lock in another player. I want to try to get two of these tiers sort of locked down. This is the attempt to get the perfect lineup. You're not winning at tiers. Pick them in a tournament unless you get the perfect mix. So I'm going to choose these two and take a chance. That just removed a lot of these question marks, or a lot of these names out of the equation. Now, if one of these other guys hits a home run and outscores Michael Brantley, I'm done. So I don't necessarily recommend doing this, especially not in MLB, which is so high variance. But... If your research leads you to want to pull some players, then that's fine. Do it. Now, a couple other settings we have. Set the number of lineups. I'm going to set 20. That's a pretty standard um, for a contest size for tiers or pick them. Set the number of uniques. Now, I'm generally going to play one unique in tiers, meaning each lineup just has one different player than the previous one. And the reason I'm doing that, if you here, I'm going to I'm going to show you pretty interesting thing. If I set it to two, I bet lineup number two will be lower than 60.416. Let me just experiment with that. Yep. 60.074. Notice the drop down because this forcibly going suboptimal with some of these lineups. So the drop down in projection from one to the next is more significant now. That's fine. Strategy wise, When you're entering 150 lineups or a lot, you know, you can, uh, setting it, or when you're setting it to two, it's fine strategy wise when you're entering tournaments and you want to get more diversification and a larger player pool. Nothing wrong with it. But in tiers, again, what I'm trying to do is narrow it down a little bit. And I, I think two is not, I want to narrow it down my selections. I'm not showing you all that here, but generally what I'll do is, then, you know, I've done a couple of lock-ins. Then I'll look at a few spots and say, I don't like this guy, that guy. You know, I don't want him. I don't want him. I, I want him. I don't want him. You know, whatever it is. So I'll pull some players out of each tier. Well, I don't want that guy. And remember, I'm just randomly doing this. But you understand, I'm trying to reduce my player pool down to players I think have a shot at being in the perfect lineup. Or I might make a strategy of where I think, all right, this guy's going to be super high owned. I want him out. He'll be the highest owned. You know, I could play a very um, game theory approach. So rather than using uniques to expand my player pool, I'd rather pull players that I don't want. Okay, now I can run the lineups. If we want to get even crazier with this, you can start to do things like, well, it's not really even crazier, it's how you should be doing, but you could start to set max exposures on certain players. So here we have, let's say in tier five, those are, those are, showing up 100% of the time, right? Now, I might say, well, yeah, he looks like he should show up, and I've removed Dickerson, who might have been, like, the drop, the reason that's happening is the drop from Dozier to these other guys is a pretty significant drop, but let me re-enable Dickerson, and I think that alone, that move alone, will cause more diversification. So let's see if Dozier still shows up at 100% down to 65%. So you see how that works. The tool is going to pick out the top projected. I can manipulate it based on removing players, leaving players in, and I can also set max player exposure. So let's say I didn't mess too much with one of these tiers or Joey Votto, but I don't want him more than 45%. Whenever I use expo max exposures, I do like to use tournament mode. Never set the max exposure universally. Do it one player at a time. You know, look at a player. If he's showing up more than you want, put a max on that one player. Do not do this universally. And if you set 
parameters that are too restrictive, like let's say, I think in, uh, I assume, let's see, tier 5. Let's go back to tier 5 here real quick. We only have two players allowed in the pool in, in, in 5. If I go 45% on him, 45% on him, what I've just done is basically set a parameter that is impossible to fulfill. You can't have under 100%. What happens? Doesn't work. Okay. Doesn't work. You need one player in each tier set to 100%. So how do I ensure that that works out? I set the player that has the higher projection with the max exposure and the lower projection we set to 100%. Well, I was a little scared it wasn't going to work, but that's how it works. And when we look down, we should have Dozier at 65% and Dickerson at 35%. So let's see, 60%, 40. All right, close enough. Um, in 20, that's just a one lineup difference, but um, that will happen. So there we go, relatively close to that, and that's how it's supposed to work. There you have it. Once you're done, you can set your 20 lineups, set your number of uniques. When you're done, you're happy. All download, save, upload to DraftKings on the lineup page, and enter them into the contest. Um, we're going to have pick them for all of the sports that cover it. These are things we're building out for the Domination Station right now, so NFL will have it. I'm looking at any other games NFL might have. We'll have those too. So no worries. In the meantime, if you are not currently a DFSArmy.com VIP, we are helping turn DFS Joes, average Joes, into DFS Pros. You can see it here on the wall of wins. This doesn't happen by accident. These are the wins. I'm going back to it, but these are the wins just from this season. This doesn't happen by accident. These are average players, regular guys, real job, kids, wife. They're playing. They're using our tools. They've got our advice. And they're kicking ass and taking names. It is ridiculous. Um, this goes on and on. This goes on and on. I'm going to scroll down because I showed you some of these before. But this stuff goes on and on and on. $250,000 winner for NFL season last season. That's not it. $15,000 winner. NFL. NBA. $50,000 winner. Wait. Another guy in the same contest. Five. That, that doesn't happen by accident. There's your boy. That's me, $50,000 NBA winner. Ryan, fight on, $50,000 winner. This happens. So use promo code GEEK. There's a there's another um, D. Barrow, same guy won the 250. Boom. Basketball championship qualifier. Are you kidding? He wins 100 to 250 in NFL, wins 100, uh, 60,000 in NBA. Another NFL big winner, Big Daddy Kang. What's up, my man? Anyway. Use these tools, join our group, use promo code GEEK, G-E-E-K, you get 10% off your membership, dfsarmy.com, see you there.